Hey, welcome everyone to Python GUI AppsCon 2023. Uh, we'll be starting the session here. This session is on Delphi FMX and AI, a recipe for success, unleashing AI in cross-platform GUI development with Delphi FMX. I am Eli M with fmxexpress.com. I've been a developer for over 26 years. I deliver content and technology that has reached over 250 million people worldwide, including 4 million developers. And I'm the webmaster of fmxexpress.com. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to look at the origins of Delphi FMX. Where did it come from? Um, we're going to look at what some of the features are. What is the anatomy of a Delphi FMX application? How can we add styling to a Delphi FMX application? Uh, where to get a free ebook with Hedgeable to help information about Delphi FMX and 15 free styles for Delphi FMX and what some of those styles are available for Delphi FMX. Uh, after that we're going to look at what is openai.com and we're going to build a chat GPT application using chat BTT, GPT uh, and it's going to have a Python GUI interface. We're going to look at that API call and then we're going to look at the final application and run it and maybe test it a little bit in PyScripter. After that, we're going to look at what is replicate.com and what is stable diffusion. And then we're going to look at, and so a part of that, we're going to see how to build a stable diffusion type application using Python at, at, with a GUI. And we're going to use chat GPT to do that as well. We're going to look at the replicate API and, and, and some more information and we'll check it out in PyScripter as well. And finally, we're going to find more about replicate.com and can it do large language models like Bakuna 13b and then we're going to build a uh, application with chat GPT uh, using Python GUI uh, to to access the Vicuna 13b model on replicate.com we're going to look at that API call and then finally we'll look at that application in the source code as well so let's get started what are the origins of Delphi FMX for Python well uh, Delphi FMX it comes from the comes from the FireMonkey library, which is found in Delphi and Rad Studio. And so Delphi FMX is the Python package that wraps up that library to makes it available to Python. FireMonkey is a cross-platform framework for Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. <clears throat> FireMonkey has a number of rendering targets, including OpenGL, Metal, uh, OpenGL ES, GDI Plus, and GTK, depending on the, the platform that's running on. There's even a library which allows you to render FireMonkey apps via Skia. And then FireMonkey applications also have a visual designer in Delphi, and which is also part of Rad Studio. Uh, so all of that is kind of the origins of Delphi FMX. And so that's packaged up as a Python uh, package, and you get all of that except for, except for iOS. There's no iOS support in Delphi FMX, uh, but the original FireMonkey application does support uh, iOS. What are some of the features of Delphi FMX? As, as I just said, it works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. It's customizable, offers flexibility and control over UI, GUI design. There's over 124 components. There's 18 different layout options, and there's a visual designer. You can design the apps in Rad Studio and, and then export the forms uh, in, for use in your, your Python applications. Uh, it's, it's GPU accelerated for smoother graphics, and there's an active community of, with extensive online resources and community around uh, FireMonkey and the Delphi FMX library. So this is the ecosystem, the Embarcadero Python ecosystem, and this shows how, where Delphi FMX fits in that ecosystem. So uh, Embarcadero sponsors PyScripter, which is a Python uh, IDE, and as then there's also the Delphi FMX, which is the cross-platform uh, wrapper around FireMonkey, and there's also the Delphi VCL uh, Python package, which is a wrapper around the Delphi VCL uh, library for Windows 32 and Windows 64. And you can export uh, forms using the D4P uh, exporter to use in Delphi FMX. There's also an FMX app builder, which allows you to build the Android applications using the Delphi FMX library. And then on the Delphi side, you can access Python uh, using Python for Delphi, and you get access to all the, the Python libraries and things through Delphi, uh, Python for Delphi. 
And Delphi uses object Pascal language. And then on a second part of Rad Studio is C++ Builder. So how can we install the Delphi FMX package? It's, it's pretty simple. It's just pip install Delphi FMX. And then you can start using in your applications using by adding from Delphi FMX import star at the top. And so here is the GitHub repo for the Delphi FMX for Python library. And so we could scroll down, see some of the information about it here, and how to install it, the different, what it supports, uh, the Conda support, the VENV support, and some links to other things, licensing and stuff like that. And then also there is the samples here. You can go in and you can see the hello world, password generator, other simple uh, to-do lists, things like that. We scroll down here, we can see some screenshots of those forms that Delphi FMX allows you to, to edit. And so these are all Python applications. So we can close that up and then let's move on. What does a hello world look like in Delphi FMX? So first you import it at the top with from Delphi FMX import star, and then you can initialize your application, uh, add a title, uh, set some properties, show show the form, and then you application run. And after that, you uh, you applicate app destroy. So this is the most simple basic version of it, and, and we'll get into another version of it later that's more structured. And, which is here. Here's the anatomy of a Delphi FMX application. So we have their import section, which we just talked about, and then we can have a class section where, in this case, we have a hello form, and there's an init, and inside that init, you, we do the set properties, uh, and we start creating the various components that will be visible on the form. So in this case, there's a label, there's a button, and then there's, uh, as we can see, there's an on show event, and then uh, a button click event as well. So those are both defined. You can see both of those there. And then finally, there's the main section where we have the main, and then it does what we just looked at above, which was the application init. We set the tile in the main form, we show the form, and then it, and then we complete the application. So you can see all those those samples there. We, we looked at the samples already in the, in the repo. And so here is all of the different components you get access to in Delphi FMX. Um, so there's a panel, there's a call-out panel, label button, speed button, check boxes, radio buttons, uh, group box, uh, status bar, toolbar, uh, splitters, progress bars, um, switches, scroll bars, uh, animated, animated, any indicator, there's an arc dial, uh, there's an image control, there's multiple image controls actually, there's different edit boxes, uh, there's a memo box, and there's list boxes and list view. Uh, tab controls, uh, multi-view, there's an open dialog that, which pops up a, a open open form to open uh, select files. Um, there's different shapes you can use, line, rectangle, I like to use rectangle a lot, um, arc, pi, circle, ellipse. There's different color pickers and then there's different layout. There's a, a layout which is kind of just a standard invisible box that you can used to help you d design your forms. There's scaled layout, there's scroll boxes, vertical scroll boxes, there's grid layouts, grid panel layout, that's one I use a lot. Um, different scroll boxes, then there's there's forms and frames, there's menus, which is the standard Windows style menu that you would get at the top of a, a application. There's different grids uh, and some other different things which are kind of unique to this framework. And so let's move on here. So how can we add styling to a Python GUI application that's built with Delphi FMX? So creating a GUI application with Delphi FMX for Python uses the default FMX style for the operating system that you're working on. We can load any other style using the style manager. And so you can get the styles from this link um, uh, and, and also an ebook that can, provides more information about Delphi FMX. And so what, once you get those styles, you can load them. You just add it in the right below the init in your application. You create a style manager there, and then you set the style from file. In this case, we use the air style. And so here is that ebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that ebook just to show you uh, this was this is the form where you go and you can download the ebook and you get the styles. There's styles for Delphi FMX and Delphi VCL as well. And so then we're gonna move on a little bit to here. And so here are the styles 
that I just talked about. There's, I think this one in the bottom left corner here is the Air style, but all these other, all these are the Delphi FMX styles, which are available to you when you when you get that ebook. And so, actually, I have the ebook open here. And so, I'm gonna scroll up here to the top. So here's the ebook. Uh, so we can look at the table of contents. Who should read this book? A timeline for Delphi and Python. What the DNA of it? Um, the Delphi VCL and, and FireMonkey libraries. And so then it has, um, this is the simple application, which we just talked about. And so here's the, the VCL version of it. Very similar, the, except the, the VCL is just for, for Windows and then the FireMonkey is the cross-platform version. So we can scroll through here a little bit and, and see some of the, this. So here's a more expansive version, which we also looked at the anatomy um, as well. And so here's, here's the VCL to-do app. We're gonna skip that. Um, but we can go down here to the to do application. All right, this is this, all right. So here's the to do application for FireMonkey or the Delphi FMX side. And so you can see we've got a caption. This sets the caption of the form. We have a label. We have a edit box, a button, button list box, uh, click event, click event. And that's, that's basically a two application. So I'm going to scroll down here and see if there's any other interesting stuff. Okay, so this is, this is good stuff here. You can see kind of how um, the layout would happen. Um, you can have layouts and panels that you have other controls nested inside of. And so you can hide those layouts and panels, and that hides all the controls that are contained within it. So it's kind of a nice architecture. This talks about VCL styles, and then this is what you end up in a VCL style. That's the glow style, I, I believe. And then it lists, these are all the Windows ones, different Windows ones. So we'll click through those. Let's see if we can get to the Delphi FMX section. All right, so here's the Delphi FMX styles. And so this one does a little bit different than the way I did it. This one actually loads up uh, the OS import. And then it, it uses that to get the path um, to set, to set the, the style location. And so here's an example of that application. And then there's the various different styles again. We looked at all of them together. Um, here they all see. So here's Air. That's the one I like to use. And then this is a larger version of that one slide we already looked at. So I, li I like a lot of different of these. They look they look pretty nice. Uh, and then at the end, there's, the, there's a summary here at the bottom. And so let's switch back over here to our slideshow. Okay, moving on to the next slide. What is OpenAI.com? So OpenAI.com, if you haven't heard about it, um, it's kind of been taking the world by storm with its chat GPT application. Um, it has a couple different models. It has GPT-4, which is the most recent one at the time of this uh, session. And then there's GPT-3.5, 3.5 Turbo, and things like that. And so OpenAI, they provide the model that allows you to, to ask questions and, and or the model will also write code for you. So that's kind of what this session is about, is getting, getting OpenAI's chat GPT to write some Python applications for us. And so you need an API key for that to work out. And so here in, in their the platform, openai.com, they have an account, an API key, and you can go there and, you get, and generate your API key or request. If you don't have access to the API, you can also request it, I believe, there to get access to the API if you don't have it yet. So how can we build a chat GPT app with a Python GUI interface using chat GPT? So we're going to build an application that, that uses the chat GPT application, uh, API interface using chat GPT. So this was my sample prompt that I created. You are the best 10x programmer and developer in the world in all programming languages. I'm not sure how effective it is. I read it somewhere that it was effective and it, it does reference some of this stuff when you when you ask a question so i believe that it m could be useful there so that's why i include that in the prompt create a or may not i'm not sure um create a python app using delphi fmx python library that runs an api call via openai's api to generate text response and display it in the delphi fmx python app the delphi fmx library is based on the object pascal delphi fmx library code only and no explanation so the goal there is for it just to spit out code and not an explanation of that code itself and then what i do is i, I provided an example 
of an OpenAI API call, and I put that example in there. And then I provided an example of the Delphi FMX uh, app format. So I put the Hello World app or another app, some sample code in there, and and see what it comes up with. So I I set that all up, and here is the example of the OpenAI API call in Python. There's a you have to import the OpenAI package, and then you can call call chat GPT 3.5 turbo with with this command. And so here is the source code for the application. I have it over in GitHub. And so in order to run it, you need to do these two pip installs. Uh, and then there's the source code for the application. So we're going to move on to the next slide here. And so here we have it running in PyScripter. And so I ran the application. You can see it here, and here's the response that it received. So th this is the air style that you can see here running in this Python application through Delphi FMX. And so you can see some of the code here. And we'll launch PyScripter here in a minute and, and, and run it from there. So we're going to, I can click here. So you, if, if you don't have PyScripter yet, you can download it from here on the Embarcadero website. It's free. I'm going to switch over to PyScripter. And so here we are in the ChatGPT application. So you can see at the top we have our style manager. It creates a style using the air style. And we set some properties, including the caption of the form. We create a layout, some la a label, and edit a button, a memo. We set the size, uh, height and width of the form, and then at the and that set gets set in the show show event. And at the end, it, it frees up uh, the form. And so here's also the button. So this, this is the button click. Uh, that actually launches the, the OpenAI API call and get, takes that response and it places it into the memo control. I'm going to go ahead and then run this. And so here is our application and I'm going to click generate. And so this is going to make the API call out to OpenAI's API and get a response from ChatGPT. And this is this is through uh, the 3.5 GPT 3.5 Turbo, and so there we have it. Embarcadero Delphi is a object-oriented programming language, an IDE in, for Windows that was first released in 1995. Okay, so that was our Chat GPT application. So I'm going to switch back over here to our slideshow, and we'll move on to the next section. So, what is Replicate.com and Stable Diffusion? So Replicate they, allows you to run models in the cloud. So the machine learning can be difficult and, and, and complex, and they try to make it so that it's not. And so one way they do that is they have all the models loaded up on the cloud, and then you can access them via an API instead of having to do all the work yourself uh, to get that all set up. They also let you to run the models locally. So they provide, they have a tool called COG, and then they also provide you uh, with Docker images that you can run the the models locally if you'd like to do that. So they have lots of different models. They have diffusion models uh, for images. They have image editing models. So I like I like GFPGAN a lot. I like Codeformer. Um, I use Stable Diffusion model. They also have ControlNet models. So there's also con ControlNet Scribble. I like that one. I use that one as well. Um, image restoration, uh, machine learning makeovers, and super resolution. Lots of people use super resolution. I like Swin2SR. Uh, that's one of the ones that I use. So, and then you can, you can go to replicate.com. They have an explore page where you can scroll through all of the models that they have available and see more than what I've just had on my slide. So these are popular ones, GFP can uh, and uh, control net scribble. And so here's some of the latest models that other people, so they, they have hosted models from that they have posted and they have, and you can also post your own and other and access ones that other people have posted as well. Okay, so when you go, you go in, you'll need an API token for this as well. And so where can I get the API.com key? So there, here's the link and there's the page. Um, you go there, you grab your key and, and get started. So how can we build a stable diffusion app with a Python GUI interface using ChatGPT? So this is very similar to the ChatGPT 
version of the application that we built, except for in this instance, it's going to the Replicate API, and it's, it's going to pull down an image instead of just text. So this is the prompt that I use, and again, it's very similar to the previous one we did. You are the best 10x programmer and developer in the world in all programming languages. Create a Python app using the Delphi FMX Python library that runs an API call via Replicate's API to generate a stable diffusion image and display it in the Delphi FMX Python app. The Delphi FMX library is based on the object Pascal Delphi FMX library code only and no explanation. So then I provide uh, the sample API call uh, in Python from Replicate. I put that in the prompt as well so that JAT-GPT knows for sure how to do that kind of API call. And then I provide the sample application from Delphi FMX also in the prompt. So I combine all that together and I send that to JAT-GPT and hopefully it spits out something useful. So here's the, here's the example of the Replicate API call in Python. You have to import Replicate. Uh, and then you just run it. And so in this case, what we're doing here is we're, this is the stability AI, stability, stable diffusion uh, ID for the model that's hosted on, on Replicate's system. So we pass that in as one of the parameters. That's the version of it. And we pass in the prompt that we wanted to run. And so here is the application that was built using ChatGPT. The source code is here on GitHub. And so... Um, you, you need to pip install Delphi FMX and you need to pip install Replicate. And so there it is. And we'll dig into the code here in a little bit. So we're going to move on to the next slide. And so here is the application running. This is in PyScriptor. You can see the application. You can see we ran generate and it generated this image. So you can download PyScriptor if you don't have it. Again, from just like the previous slide. Uh, and then I'll switch over here to PyScriptor and select the, the Stable Diffusion application. And we can walk through that a little bit. So we have at the very top, which is above here, is where I define the API key. You, you need that API key to, to run the application. Again, we create with Style Manager. Select the style from the file. Right here, we set the properties of the caption. We have the on show and the on close events. And those down go down here. This sets the height and the width, and this frees up the form. So again, it's very similar to the, to the chat application. It loads up the layout, it loads up a label, it loads up an edit, a button, and an image control. And that image control is where we will load the image that comes back from the API. So we go down here to the button click. Inside the button click, we have we run the API call. And so this. Uh, version is very simple. So it, it's just doing an asynchronous call. So this the, it, the application will freeze while it waits for the response. Uh, they, they do also offer an example of an asynchronous call where you could add a progress bar or something like that so the application isn't frozen up. But just for the demo purposes, we're just using the synchronous call. We run the call. At, we have some other things here. We have a negative prompt. There's other prompts that you can go on replicate.com, see what the other the other properties are that you can set send to the input and get different different things like the size and the width um, of the image that you would like to generate. And then finally, we save the file out and then we load it into the image control. And here's the rest of the main application where it runs. So we can go ahead and run that and see how that works out. So here it is. We have our application styled with the air dot style. And so this is hooked up to Stable Diffusion and via the Replicate API. We're going to go ahead and click Generate here. And hopefully it's going to load up pretty quickly. And there you go. We just generated that image live from Stable Diffusion. And so there, there it is. So we're going to click back to our slideshow now and move on to the next slide. So can Replicate.com also do LLMs like Vicuna 13B? So LLM stands for uh, large language model, which is what GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 are. So those are controlled by OpenAI.com. And then in this case, Vicuna 13B is available from some other provider, some other third-party provider. And uh, it's hosted on a, as one site because Replicate hosts, hosts models, different models. Um, they, they host Vicuna 13B. So Vicuna 13B is supposed to be pretty good uh, at doing answers as well. Um, Replicate.com, they host thousands of models ready to use. Their, their community of machine learning hackers have 
share all those models for you on, on their site. So here's a list, some of the, those models, Vacuna 13B is one of them. They also have Dolly, they also have Open Assist model, uh, Flan T5, some other ones there, Llama 7B, um, things like that. So how can we build an LLM app with Vacuna 13B using Python GUI interface built in ChatGPT? So this is very similar to uh, the OpenAI application that we built for ChatGPT. But in this case, Vacuna 13B is not part of OpenAI. It's, you can run it separately, you can run it locally, uh, and, 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 or any other model that you wanted to run off of replicate.com. So you can run it on your own GPU if you have a GPU that can handle that. You, just, you would be able to load up the Docker image on your, on your machine, and you would be able to connect this app to the Docker image instead of to the remote API. In which case, you would be using your own hardware, and you wouldn't be paying any API uh, fees. So here is the prompt, very similar to the previous ones. So OpenAI.com actually came out with uh, came out with a prompt uh, blog about how how to write a good prompt. So I, I see here that I wrote ChatGPT prompt, but in this case, all right. So th this is for. Uh, ChatGPT. We're going to create the application using ChatGPT. And so uh, we wrote, as before, you are the best 10x programmer and developer in the world in all programming languages. Create a Python app using the Delphi FMX Python library and runs an API call via Replicate's API to generate text response and display it in the Delphi FMX Python app. The Delphi FMX library is based on the open Pascal Delphi FMX library code only and no explanation. So then I include the replicate API call, which is slightly different because we're going to make a call for, an, for a text instead of a call for an image. Uh, and then we also provide that Delphi FMX Python sample. And this all goes in the chat GPT prompt, and then chat GPT does what it does and sends us back a response. So here's that example replicate API call, and so we import from replicate, and so as you can see, this is goes to a model called the Vacuna 13B version, and there is the prompt that we're going to send it. And so we can click out to GitHub and see that source code available online. So all these source codes are with the MIT license. So you do pip install Delphi FMX, and as before, just the previous one, we do pip install replicate, and those are the two that it needs to run. Move on to the next slide. And so here, here we have it open in PyScriptor again. And so PyScriptor also supports debugging and things like that. You've got their the code explorer over there, which is nice. And so you can see that in this case, we have our, our Vacuna 13B form. And we load it up, and it runs and gets this response. So I'm going to scope out of here and go over to PyScriptor and go to the Vacuna app. So I'm going to go ahead and run the Vacuna application. And then maybe walk through a little bit. So here's the Vacuna application. So I'm not going to run this in the scope of this session. So Replicate has a thing where if some models are they're they're not loaded by default, and so they take they can take three to five minutes for them to, to cold boot uh, and load up into cache or something like that. And so then it, it takes three to five minutes for it to initially load, and then if you continue using it, then it will it will be fast and, and have immediate responses after that. So I'm not going to run this right now because this one I believe is not is not would have to cold boot if I did go ahead and click generate here. But we can walk through the source code here. We I, again this is very similar to the other two that we built. We have our style manager at the top. Now chat GPT did not add this style manager section when it created the application. I manually added this at the top and they also had to massage some of this code down here as well. So again, we, we set the, the properties, the caption, on show, on close. We have our layout, label, edit, button, and memo. Um, and we do this, our replicate run against the Vacuna 13B. And you, there's some things like temperature that you can set. And then it comes back with, and we concatenate all of those responses onto the memo control, and then it runs. So switching back to our slideshow. So here we go. Here is a, a roundup of all the links that we that we talked about in in this session. We have the link there at the top for Delphi FMX for Python. We have the Delphi FMX for Python repo on GitHub where you can get the source code or build it yourself if you need to. So you would need you would need Embarcado Delphi in order to build that source code. Uh, we have the link to the ebook and the 15 plus styles for Delphi FMX. You can get that 
Uh, there's the link to the API, ref API reference for OpenAI. So if you want to access other APIs or find out what else you can do with their API, you can go to that documentation there. And so we have the link to the ChatGPT client uh, that I built using ChatGPT uh, and Delphi FMX, and that's the repo for that. We have the Replicate API, so you can go there and get the documentation for uh, the Python documentation for Replicate. And so they, again, they have samples there for a, for asynchronous calls. And you'd probably want to use that in a real world application because then the user would be able to look at a nice progress bar and not just a frozen application. And finally, we have the Python GUI stable diffusion client that we built using ChatGPT and Delphi FMX. Uh, there is the repo for that. And then we have the, the repo for the Python GUI, the Kuna 13B client. Uh, and the repo for that. So what's cool about the the replicate is you can just swap out that version uh, of Rec of Vacuna 13B, and you can slot in Stable Diffusion ML or, or one of the other models that they host, and and you're instantly switched over to that. So it's really nice from my perspective that you can access a bunch of different models or on the stable diffusion side. You can swap out Edge of Realism or any of the other models that they host, or you can actually create your own models and host them there as well. So that I think it makes it really versatile um, that you can use different models all with the same API. That's really nice. And then the fact that you can take the, those models if you want and run them locally if you need to using Docker, that really makes it a, a nice combination uh, that I've seen. All right, so here we go. That, that's that's we can close out on this session. Thank you for watching, and thank you for for joining our sessions here at Delphi. Or sorry, at Python GUI AppsCon 2023. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.